Now in the second section of our lecture, we will start with the onset of labor. The onset of labor is, uh, in this we will talk about the maintenance of uterine quiescence. Maintenance of uterine quiescence is very important to maintain the pregnancy and to avoid the onset of labor. So as long as the maintenance of uterine quiescence is there, then the onset of labor can be avoided. Inflammatory process, and then we will talk about the role of oxytocin and prostaglandins in the onset of labor. Onset of labor, how the labor begins with is mainly by the synchronization of myometrial activity through greater expression of gap jun junctions that connect myometrial cells. So onset of labor, the theory behind this, how the labor begins is by the increase in the gap of the junctions that keeps the myometrial cells close together. So this brings about the onset of labor. So synchronization of myometrial activity that starts the myometrial activity. And once the onset of myometrial activity occurs, this cause contraction and the myomet muscles contract and cause onset of labor. So myometrial activity begins with increase in the gap of, uh, uh, in, increase in the gap of the junctions between the myometrial cells that connects the myometrial cells together. So, and there is also activation of cassette of contraction associated proteins, CAP. CAP stands for uh, uh, cassette of contraction uh, associated proteins. So this is contraction associated proteins that leads to contraction of the uterus. These proteins include gap junction proteins, oxytocin and prostanoid receptors, enzymes for prostaglandin synthesis and cell signaling proteins. So activation of these proteins also start or activate contraction of the myometrium. This is the uh, beginning of the onset of the labor by increasing the junction uh, that connects the myometrial cells and also activation of the different proteins that leads to the activation of myometrial cell. Progesterone maintains uterine quiescence. So as the uh, pregnancy progress, there is increase in the level of progesterone here. You see in the beginning level is low, about 2.1. As the pro pregnancy progress, there is increase in the level of the progesterone. So this is the level of progesterone. At parturition or at labor, at the delivery, what happens now is throughout the pregnancy, there is increase in the level of progesterone hormone. So at delivery or at parturition, there is decrease in the circulating progesterone. There is lysis of corpus luteum. Corpus luteum is uh, produce progesterone and it's very important for the maintenance of the pregnancy. And then administration of progesterone receptor antagonist. So these are the two factors mainly that lowers the level of progesterone. With the level of progesterone decreasing, it can cause uh, contraction of the myometrial tissue and uterus and then onset of the labor. Labor is uh, considered as an inflammatory process. Some 
uh, steps that occur in the onset with the onset of labor they resemble the steps which occur during the inflammatory process uh, in if, what are some resemblances between the labor and inflammatory process we can see there is there is production of the factors like prostate glandin synthetase then we have cytokines chemokines there is an elevated level of interleukins and tumor necrosis factor all this is increased in inflammatory process and all these are raised in the labor and with the onset of labor so there is resemblance between the onset of labor and the inflammatory process now what's the role of oxytocin on the onset of labor oxytocin induction of labor if there is a, we need to do induction of labor oxytocin is administered and this oxytocin cause contraction of the uterus and onset of the labor and then this oxytocin is normally produced in the body also from the pituitary gland so function of the or the role of oxytocin is um, uh, oxytocin oxytocin receptor system so how it act on the we have um, oxytocin stimulate contraction of the uterus and pushes the baby towards the cervix so uh, it causes contraction of the uterus once the uterus contract it put pressure on the baby and the baby is pushed towards the cervix head of the baby pushes against the cervix nerve impulse from the cervix transmitted to the brain brain stimulate pituitary gland and produce oxytocin oxytocin carried in blood stream to the uterus and then uh, this is the normal mechanism by which the oxytocin is produced and if we need extra oxytocin for the induction of labor it can be injected during the process of the labor but it should not be it should be very carefully injected or given because excess of oxytocin is uh, the cause of postpartum hemorrhage also so it should be given under very strict supervision of the obstetrician so oxytocin is the hormone that cause contraction of the uterus and then cause onset of the labor and delivery now what's the role of prostaglandins in the onset of the labor there is uh, we have estrogen which is produced from the ovaries hormone it cause uh, oxytocin receptor induces oxytocin receptors on the uterus and then this oxytocin once the oxytocin is produced it cause contraction of the uterus and cause production of the prostaglandins again prostaglandins cause more contraction of the uterus and then the helps in the delivery of the baby so both oxytocin and prostaglandins help in the onset of the labor and the delivery and the production of prostaglandins depends on the production of oxytocin which is produced from the pituitary gland so both oxytocin and prostaglandins have very important role in the onset of the labor so that was all about this section thank you for watching scardia.com